Now, we skip 7, 4, too complicated with two inputs, we don't need that. Uh, we skip 7, uh, 5, optimal combination, how you com uh, combine uh, capital and labor. And we move on to uh, 7, 6, which is returns to scale. 7, 6. All right, so, uh, for example, if you double the number of inputs, will the number of output double or not? Now, when we say you double the number of inputs, remember, so far I was discussing capital is fixed and labor increases. Well, what if now you increase both capital and labor at the same time. Think of a small scale version of a supermarket will be, I know, Choitrons, okay. It's got only six or seven or eight, and, well, 10 employees in a very small area. Now you take a twice bigger area, okay, like Lulu. So now you double the capital, meaning the trading area, the computers, the cashiers, and everything else. And at the same time, you double the number of workers. All workers are doubled. So maybe double cash registers, maybe double chef, shelf, whatever, managers, suppliers, and everything else. If you double the size of capital and labor and all other resources, would you double sales and profits, or in this case output, or you would more like triple it. It will increase it. It will increase, but the question is how many times? So if you increase it by 50% only, will it more like double or triple? Double. Hmm? So, more likely, if you increase by 50% inputs, you will be able to double the revenues and probably the profits. If you double the inputs, you're more likely going to triple the revenues. For example, a lot more people are in Lulu than they are in, let's say, Sofia. Okay? Because I go to these two, I think, between them. Okay? So I, I get to see both of them and I see the traffic at the one place is a lot bigger. Maybe there are other reasons because the mall is attracting uh, whatever the store is. But the point is that as you increase the scale, so now we need to determine scale. Scale is the quantity of inputs used. So, the quantity of capital and the quantity of labor. As you increase the scale, probably the output will go faster. And this is called economies of scale. So, economies of scale. You have a simple function Q, which was function of capital and labor. Okay. And if you increase, let's say, double capital and labor, and here you're going to have some uh, number alpha Q. So maybe Q will increase by 20%, 30%, 50%, 100%. If you say, double capital and double labor at the same time. You double all inputs. Well, what's going to happen with alpha? Now, is the quantity going to increase by two times, three times, uh, four, times. four times, five times, okay? Or maybe only half time. 
Think of these uh, shops that change the car tires. And they already got four rows, okay, with four lifts, okay. And they decide to double and make eight lifts. They hire twice more people. It turns out that there aren't that many cars in town. They can't get as efficient. So here is now the explanation. If, let me write this out in black. If alpha is more than, in this case, two, okay, if you more than double, we say that you have economies of scale. Now, it is possible that you Double the inputs, but alpha increases very little, maybe only 20-30%. You can't double it. So if alpha is less than two in this particular case, okay, you can't double it. We say you have this economies of scale. This economies of Scale, okay. And if alpha just happens to be two, you double input and then you double output. You, we say that you have no economies of scale. So you can have economies of scale. This economies means you don't even get the return on the input, and no economies of scale. You increase by three percent inputs, outputs will grow by grow by three percent. You increase by fifty percent, output will grow by fifty percent. So now we have also a different name. I gotta use a different color. When we say that we have economies of scale. It's also said that you have increasing returns to scale. Increasing. So, these two are exactly the same. Whether you say you have economies of scale, or increasing returns to scale, it's exactly the same thing. We just use two different phrases for exactly the same economic phenomenon. When we say that there are no economies of scale, we say that we have constant returns to scale. returns to scale. relatively 
relatively efficient. Okay. And this will be relatively inefficient. Now, in other words, here you're going to have improving or increasing efficiency. And with efficiency, you will have increasing profitability. And here you will have rising inefficiencies and falling profits, okay? So, now, here's the answer to your original guess. You double the size, let's say, of Lulu, and you're gonna get three times more customers. Now, imagine it's twice bigger, and you wanna double it again. Will you increase three times more again? So when you increase the size four times, the output will be up nine, ten times? Maybe, maybe not. In other words, there comes a point of constant returns to scale, or no economies of scale, where you can increase the scale, but the profits can't keep rising. And then, imagine Lulu to be ten times bigger. Can they get 20 times more output, sales, and customers? No, you just don't have enough people. So, at first, economies of scale are always for increasing or rising or positive, rising returns to scale. Then, at one point, the returns to scale become constant, and then they turn negative. So this refers to the scale of operation. For example, university. University can double the number of rooms and it can double the number of teachers, okay? And it can probably triple the number of students, okay? So you have what's called now optimum scale. Optimum scale. where you don't want your shop to be too small because if you expand a little bit, you could be making a lot more money. But you don't want to be so big where it's too hard to manage. So, now we have, or I have uh, uh, two questions to answer, which means, you pay attention, that these are the questions you have to answer next time, okay? The first question is, why, why you have increasing returns to scale? Why increasing returns? Why increase in return? In other words, if your business is very small, why, if you grow the business, it will grow faster than the number of inputs? Okay? And there are simple answers. Number one is specialization. Specialization, when you specialize in something, anything, you become a lot more productive, okay? Specialization, be both of labor and of capital, okay? Now, part of specialization is the following. If I specialize in teaching only microeconomics, over time, of course, if I'm teaching it three times 
each semester and do this for many, many, many years, I'm going to become a lot more efficient, okay? So part of specialization involves learning and experience. Okay? It's very difficult for me to learn and become really good when I'm teaching investments, corporate finance, bank management, and what else am I teaching? International finance and macroeconomics, okay? It's, again, preparing for six courses is way too much work. I'm spread out too much. Same thing, for your job, you got 20 different responsibilities. is way more difficult than if you're doing just one thing. For example, if you have an uh, accounting department, one person in accounting will do only accounts receivables. Another person will do only cash. A third person will specialize only in salaries, salary payouts, okay? So you will have, even though you have accounting, which specializes in accounting, we inside accounting have each person specializing in it, his own little thing. Let's say salary payment, we'll call it payroll, okay? So specialization is the one big reason and it's at the same time, it's pretty much the same thing with specialization. It's the same thing. It's called division of labor. Division of labor. Uh, example will be, uh, I just gave you the example of the Sapphire girls. Uh, one of them just sits on the cash register. She's going to be very good at doing the cash register. Another one will be very good at putting for each little product. They got a little sticker with the price. Seven dirham, nine dirham, eleven dirham. She's going to be very good at uh, taking the sticker, putting it on, taking the sticker, putting it on, because she may have to have to put one thousand stickers today or two thousand stickers today okay so she'll get to through division of labor you do only this part you do only that part the third person will do only let's say the shelves okay you restock and arrange the shelves okay so they will specialize so through division of labor so these two are let's just say the same thing and these two are the fundamental reason for increasing returns. I just gave you the example of uh, uh, labor, but you could have specialization of capital, as in particular software, the smart learning system that we use, where I upload one time the PowerPoint slides and you all access them, okay? But if later, the smart learning system is smart enough when I'm teaching next term. They'll, from next term, they'll just copy paste all the materials that I gave you for the next course. And I don't have to redo all the work of uploading and customizing and everything else. It will all transfer, okay? So you'll have specialization of capital two. So that's the reason for the first why. And now we need the second why. As your business grows, 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 grows bigger and bigger, at one point you get diminishing returns to scale. So the question is why you have diminishing returns. And the first short, uh, first short answer is coordination. Coordination. It gets a lot more 
difficult, let's say, to manage two, three, four different campuses here. It's a lot more difficult to manage 100 or 200 or 300 professors, okay? If you're a Lulu, or let's say Dubai Mall, you're gonna have maybe two, 3,000 employees. It's a lot harder to manage. So, you have problem with coordinating between all managers, between all employees, between all suppliers. So, suddenly it gets, this is the same as hard to manage. It's hard to... Hmm? Yes, hard to manage, essentially correct. This is the same thing as loss of control. Again, when you're watching six employees, it's one thing. But let's say if you have 100 accountants, say the whole organization is 5,000 people, and we've got 5,000 people who have one under the accountants, okay? You can't keep track of who's doing what and how, okay? Now, when I was teaching in Thailand, or let's say five years ago, four years ago, 2013, yes, I go in there at the university, it's a huge university, maybe four or five thousand people, and I gotta go to the uh, accounting department to set up my salary and whatnot. It's like a huge room, a whole like 30, 40 accountants, okay? You can't keep track who's doing what and how, do they have a work. One accountant does one thing, a second accountant does a different, third accountant does a third thing. But one accountant specializes, but it's not probably fully employed eight hours a day. They probably work for four hours, and for the other four hours they do Facebook, chatting, chatting, okay? So, uh, again, it's loss of control. Suddenly you have some inefficiencies, which is the same thing which I wrote over here. Loss of control and rising inefficiencies. Now, these inefficiencies rise because of, it's called lack of coordination, difficult to coordinate, again, difficult to manage, hard to control. We call this discoordination. Suddenly, it's not clear who is responsible for what, okay? So, let's see what else I have. Division of labor, specialization. Okay, that finished my section